Okay, so hi everybody. I'd first like to thank uh, DDI Summit for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to share my ideas. And today we're going to focus on the recommender-based transformers. Okay, so by the end of the presentation, you'll know what I'm talking about and you'll be well-versed in the subject. So the first thing you wanna look at is machines taking humans beyond their limits. Okay, what does that mean? That means let, let's take it in terms of transportation. Let's, let's go back to when we didn't even have cars. We had to walk from one place to another to give someone a message. Let's say we were living somewhere in Africa and we had to go from one little place to another to tell someone something. Then after we had drums, you know, that we could do that, but then drums wouldn't, wouldn't go that far. So after we had boats and all that stuff, and then Let's let's fast forward, and at one point we have car, we had horses, and you could, you know, the Romans used horses to to for messages to carry information, and then we had we have cars because I'm really fast forwarding, cars, satellites, so you can see transportation is a key factor in information. The web is only a transportation system. The video you're looking at is came through transporting packs of information. So we're talking about transportation and an optimal transport. You don't want your messages to take hours to get to, you want optimal transport. So that is the key concept you wanna keep in mind in this presentation is optimal transport because it's, it's both the horizontal concept I just told you, but it's vertical in artificial intelligence. It gives you a whole new vision, okay? So what, when we're going here now, I'll just, you know, I'll just say here that, you know, I went to Sorbonne University. I registered a word to vector patent. I registered a cognitive uh, chatbot patent. I worked for corporations all my life. You can see all that in my bio. Okay, so I've, I've been in AI for decades and for co in corporate AI systems. So that let's move on. Okay, let's go back to what I was saying. And of course I optimized for these corporations. So we're, we're gonna be using three concepts here, artificial intelligence, but we also have to explain it, and transformers, the subject of our little presentation here. What, what, what's going on with transformers? Why are we speaking about transformers? What are they? Okay, so now everyone imagines, everyone imagines that e-commerce is some kind of miracle thing, you know, where you just, uh, click on a button on uh, online and the next day someone comes in uh, with a delivery truck and gives you something. Well, that's not e-commerce. E-commerce is the whole flow that goes from the customer order from you all the way down, all the way through all the, all the little problems you have. And, the, and, and when you, you do that, when you're an Amazon, for example, you want to try to group customers. So let's say we're talking about clothing. You can see right here that you have to group the orders, then you have to cut your fabric into little pieces, and then you have to sew them together. You can't, you can't just give a little pieces of fabric to people. You have to sew them together to make a t-shirt. Now, you might be saying, what do I care about t-shirts in the first place? You know, I know what a t-shirt is, and I know, what, I know that when I buy a t-shirt, that uh, someone's going to manufacture and give it to me. So why are we speaking about all this? What's the purpose of this conversation? Well, the purpose of this conversation is to say, take COVID, right? COVID is just a small example. Of course, it's a big problem, but it's a small example. You can see that creating, finding the vaccine is very different from producing the vaccine and then getting the vaccine somewhere, then storing the vaccine, then distributing to people. And you can see that this whole thing is called a supply chain and artificial intelligence has to be there all over the place. Otherwise it's pretty bumpy. If you look at what you're looking at today, you're saying, how did the governments make so, make so many mistakes with the masks, with the, to, to, to wash our hands, the products, the, they didn't make any mistakes. That's supply chain every day. That's what's happening behind the scenes when you buy something. You buy something and everyone's running around behind the scenes to get it to you. And it takes six months to a year to, a year to synchronize all that. Amazon, it took several years to synchronize all that. So this is what I'm talking about. 
And that's where AI comes in. And that's why when I'm saying to group customer orders, well, it seems so simple, but how are you going to group them when they come from all over the world? And how, where are you going to manufacture them? Are you going to manufacture them in real time? Amazon registered a patent to manufacture them in real time themselves so they wouldn't have to wait for production. So one of the keys to all of, all of this is transformers, okay? Now, what do transformers do? They're going to take all the information we're talking about, and they're going to predict sequences. So we're going to look at that in three steps. So let's, let's keep it there, okay? Just keep it there. Remember, transformers, sequences, okay? Sequences. Now, when you look at what's going on here on the market, you're saying, why is he speaking about transformers? What, what's going on? Here is the super glue leaderboard. This is the reference for all, all of these natural language processing uh, uh, algorithms. And you can see here, this is the human baseline. What is the human baseline? Well, it's a lot of tests. It's a lot of tests done by a lot of average humans. I would say even little above average humans. And look what's going on. We already have two teams beating them, beating human baselines. That means that we have exceeded the capacity of humans to do something in natural language processing, which is extended to sequences. Now that's both scary and it's reassuring because think of that a, a minute, like Facebook has maybe 2 billion members, has to control 8 billion posts a day. And you have the Senate, Congress, everyone's asking them questions. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? And you have Zuckerberg saying there, how do you think I can control 8 billion post messages a day? I can't, Twitter can't do it, no one can do it. The machines have exceeded our capacity to, for humans to master them. So we're going to need these algorithms if we want to go further. Now imagine a supply chain. Imagine with all these vaccines we're talking about or all the orders Amazon gets in one day, millions. So you need, you need a lot of intelligent software. So let's be happy that it's, it's getting there. But there still is a problem. There, 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 there still is a problem in this. Now, here's where we have to think a bit about what's going on here. Now, what are you looking at? Okay, what you're looking at is both interesting and uh, it, it can't scare a lot of people. This is you. This is what's going on when you're on YouTube or Netflix or Spotify or Alibaba or Amazon. What we're doing is we're observing all of your behaviors. Now take this into account. We're not interested in your private data anymore. Everyone's scared. He's going to take my name. He's going to take my address. We don't even care. We don't even know your gender. We don't care about your gender. We can find all that with your clicks. So what we do, if you take like uh, Amazon, let's take Amazon since we're in the supply chain thing and let's take YouTube, let's take YouTube, Amazon. So you're sitting there and you're clicking. You're clicking like crazy, especially in lockdown. So you're there and video after video after video after video. What's happening? Well, we're, we're recording all your behavior. We're looking what you're clicking on, in which order you clicked them on, how long you spent on a sequence and where you went from there. And don't think we can't follow you because when you see all these little cookies on your site, a lot of that's owned by Facebook and Amazon and other companies. So we know where you're going from where you're going to. So we're getting this image and not you in particular. Don't worry, it's not you personally that lives at that address. We're just lo looking at patterns of behaviors. This kind of person does this, this kind of person. There's nothing personal. So there's nothing to worry about, okay? No, one, no one's worried about you personally. And, and honestly, no one cares who we are anyway, if, we, if we're dead or alive. What I'm saying here is we're looking at trends. So step one, we're giving all this data for free, okay? That, that's what you have to realize. Do you really want that? You're giving all that data for free to huge corporations that then are learning using all that data to make extremely powerful AI tools. And then at that point, they're going to sell it back to us. They're going to get better. You're going to get better results on YouTube, on Google search, on Amazon. So this is why I wrote this in red here is you can, you can be the tool of AI or use AI, AI as a tool to your benefit. So it's going to depend. You want to go to cloud platforms and pay as you go, or you want to think about this presentation and say, hey, 
Why don't I earn some money like they do? Why do I have to just be giving them free data? Okay. So, so what, what I'm saying here is basically we're raw data and we're making these supply chain extremely intelligent. They know where they know where the profit is in this country. So they might be storing up things here. They know where to deliver. So, so think about it. Now, once we have that, once we have that, well, then we're going to move on and we're going to take some time here to understand what's going on in terms of transport. Remember the beginning of the presentation? I said you're not going to understand anything if you don't understand optimal transport distances. Distance is the key to everything. And it's been the key for 20,000 years and it'll be the key in the next 10,000 years, unless we're not humans anymore, because we always reason in terms of distances. Like, so the distance, we're going to represent the distance with a little d, and we're going to say, well, the distance between x and y is this little line here. And then we're going to say, well, um, I'm going to couple x and y with some parameters. So before we make this complex, because we're, we're, we're going in now, we're going, we're diving, we're going, we're going into deep water now, we're going to deeper water. So how does this go? Let's say you want to go on vacation. So distance is from your place to another place, okay? So you say, well, I have the distance. Why do I, what, what's the slide for? No, I have A and B. What is A and B? Well, these are all the parameters. Like A of X is where I'm going from. Do I have the money? Do I have the money to go where I want to that to that other point Y? Can I take a plane? Do I have the money to pay to pay for that ticket? But when I get to Y, there are other parameters. How expensive is the hotel or the house I want to rent? Whoa, whoa, let me see. This distance is maybe, maybe this is further than I thought, because now you get to a conceptual distance for self. I thought that we were close to our goals. Think of that sentence. We were close to our goal in, in our department, but then now we, our goal has gone further. So it's conceptual. So I'm saying now I'm farther from my vacation because I just found out I can pay for the plane ticket to go to Hawaii, but I don't have mo enough money to go to the restaurant, even if the hotel is cheap. Okay. So these are just examples because going to Hawaii, in fact, is cheap. So let's say you wanted to go to Paris from Las Vegas, okay, which is which is uh, a location we're talking about right now. So, so you want to go to from Las Vegas to Paris? You'll find a good plane plane ticket, but believe me, when you get to Paris, those hotels are going to be expensive. So the distance has immediately expanded. So let's take some other examples. Okay, you can see that a cat is closer to a dog than it is to a building, right? You're going to say. If you're doing a little IQ test, you're gonna say, what's closer, a cat to a dog or a cat to a building? Okay, so then you can say woman, man, child are closer to a house building office, or you can say blue, yellow, and green in this part is closer to a truck. And sometimes all this might change, okay? But what I'm saying is everything in AI is just adds up to finding these little A's and B's to figure out if it's close or not close. Like suppose I want to change concepts. I want to find a blue truck. So then blue might get very, very close to truck. So what we're trying to figure out is how to get the right things together. Now, let's say uh, uh, yellow, green, let's say green is something you like. So, uh, and, and red is something you don't wanna see. So on YouTube, we wanna figure if this video is close to you or it's not close to you. In supply chain, we want to figure out if you want to buy this t-shirt or you want to buy that t-shirt or you want to buy a Chicago Bulls t-shirt or you want to buy a, a Paris uh, St. German uh, so soccer team uh, t-shirt. So we're trying to figure out what you want and how close you are to these different things. That's what it's all about. And transformers are just looking at your sequence. They're gonna say, ah, he went from a football site to a baseball site. That's, that's strange. And then he went to, went to a soccer site. So this guy likes sports. So the next advertisement we're going to put in this video is going to be about sports. Then he's going to click on it. He's going to go to Amazon. He's going to buy a t-shirt. And then we're going to have to manufacture it, put it in a truck or a boat and get it to him. Okay? Sequences, distances. Okay, so let's, let's move on. So now you have 
optimal transport. I'm not going to kill you with theory, so don't worry. I mean, this is uh, okay. I'm just I'm just giving you little ideas to to look at. So optimal transport. Look where it dates back to 18th century. Okay, it, it, 18th century. You had uh, Louis the Sixteenth in France, and he's saying to uh, Gaspermont, he's saying, listen, uh, why does it take so long from to go from where we manufacture to get it to the people? Well, why does it take so long? You think things have changed all these years, these hundreds of years after? Read the New York Times, read the newspapers in Germany and India. Where are the vaccines? Why is it taking so long for these vaccines to get from there to there? What is going on? It's optimal transport. The problem hasn't changed. And every time there are new problems, it's complex. Now you have Kantorovich who said, yeah, well, that's nice, but we're going to have to make a model of this, a mathematical model, so that we can find mathematical solutions. OK? So then you get back to what we see here, AX, BY. I'm going from X to Y, and I have all these parameters. OK? I'm going to skip some of the theory. I don't want to scare you today, but you have Cedric Villani, who got the, the Fields Medal of Mathematics on this problem, because he knew that this was the heart of artificial intelligence. Just to tell you how important to keep in mind that everything is related to distance. OK? And you're going to see that. Now, so you're going to, so let, let, let me tell you. So right here, we have this distance, right? But when, when, let's keep it simple. When we go from one distance to another, we're spending energy, right? There's a lot of energy going on. We, also, we often say Boltzmann because we use uh, Boltzmann networks. Boltzmann is just calculating the energy in a system. But look what's going on. As things go along in your sub supply chain, the energy is building up. You're spending more and more gas. You're spending more and more time, more and more resources. In fact, all that energy increases. So what you have to keep in mind is a big mistake people make in artificial intelligence. Entropy never goes down. Entropy is always going up. Because the more you, you, you go through the process, the more energy you spend. And when we're calculating an artificial intelligence, we're just seeing if the levels of energy in entropy-driven systems is the same. But entropy keeps increasing. Look what happens when you keep using big computers. You're going to be consuming uh, flops, OK? And a lot of CPU and GPU. And in fact, like you're going to be heating your machine up. It's going to cost a lot of money and time. So AI is not an unconstrained, abstract, closed world. Entropy keeps increasing, and it's costing you a lot of money in terms of per people, human resources, machines, data. It's incredibly expensive. So you want to be careful. So now let's get to our little transformers here. And you see, I call it the donkey syndrome. Now, if you, if you take the concept I gave to you, we're going to, we're going to be able to fast flow. We're going to fast forward through the rest of this presentation. I call it the donkey thing. If you take recurrent neural networks, what do they do? They, they, they keep piling up information there. They're very costly. They look, at, they look at a sentence like the cat, and then they keep adding information, information, information up to remember all the relationships between the previous words. So you just go crazy trying. It, it, it just piles up and piles up, and it explodes, and that's why that's why they're they're out of fashion. They're obsolete. I don't know. I don't know if you you've been aware of this, but RNNs are obsolete, and LSTMs are even worse. It's too expensive. If we go back to the energy spent, so how do we solve this problem? Well, we solve it now. You can see that the longer the system was going, it was building up. Now look at this nice transformer. You don't see anything building up. You don't see anything building up because it's a nice V8 engine in this example. It will take the full sentence, it will call it, cut, it, cut it into eight parts, and run them all at the same time. So now you can use eight GPUs at the same time. And then you can add up the information at the end. So I'm just summing it up. Of course, you can, you can read it in my book or articles. You'll see how it works. But basically, that's it. We're taking the whole sentence, and we're analyzing it eight times in eight different ways, like a V8 engine, the real, and we're putting it together. 
So it makes it unlimited in terms of lengths of sequences, not really that unlimited, but very big. And it makes it very industrial. That makes it a modern, fast car. So just think it of a of the V8 engine instead of having this old donkey piling up all the time. Okay, so that now you have your transformer analyzing sequences. So now we're going to dive down into this little model of a transformer that that looks difficult, but it's in fact extremely simple to understand now that you have the tools. We have these sequences. Remember all these sequences of everything you're doing or everything in the supply chain, producing, dis transporting, uh, distributing, or you, uh, your, your behaviors. These are your sequences. But here on the left, there's this nice little thing where you can add anything you want. People's taste, uh, how long they spend on videos, how, how long did they click on the web before purchasing something. You just put all together and you have these fantastic V8 sequences that you can analyze, okay? So now we're going to dive into some little code that you can understand, in my sense, pretty easily if you follow the distance thing and the sequence thing up to now, okay? So we're going to go into a three-step thing. We're going to look at sequences, we're going to look how to train them, and then we'll look at the final result, okay? So let, let's go down here into step one, okay? I'm just going to dive into some code here. It's going to be very easy to understand. Here is this little array where I'm telling it what it can do and can't do. I'm saying you can't go there, you can go there, you can't go there, you can go there. It's just giving rules, basically like in a labyrinth. Like you're in, Let's say you're in Manhattan. Well, you can't go through the wall. So it's saying you can go there, there, but you can't go there. You can go straight, straight down to an avenue, but you can't turn to the left through a wall with your car. You're going to have to go around it. So basically, it, it's telling you where to go, but it can tell you conceptually. So if we look at a result, you're going to, say, you're going to see what it can do. Imagine you can go from B to D to C. You can go from, e to, from A to E to D to C. But, but it's, only do, it's generating all the, all the logical possibilities. Just imagine you're in Manhattan, and it just imagines all the kinds of roads you can take logically, and you can't go through uh, one-way one streets in the opposite direction. It's giving you all the good right sequences, okay? And it can do it with your behavior. It can say, A, you clicked, you clicked on the site. E you, e, you looked around at the description. D, you looked at the price. C, you purchased it. F, F could be it's ma being manufactured, it's being uh, conditioned. So you can replace it by any kind of sequence you want. So, one, so what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is we're going to go to step two, and I'll show you the slide after. Okay, let's, let's keep into the, let's stick to the code while we're in it. Okay, what do we do with those sequences? We're gonna, we're gonna bring them to the transformer. Okay, we're gonna bring them to the transformer and what is the transformer going to do? It's going to pick up all these logical sequences and it's going to do something fantastic. It's going to learn them. It's going to learn to reason like us. And I, did, I used what we call a Robert, uh, Robert uh, model of a transformer, but it's basically using all these sequences. Here are the heads of this V8 engine I'm, I was talking about. This one's a bit bigger, in fact. Okay, so then. What, what is this for? What, what's happening here? See, I'm giving it a sequence. It's learning, it's, it learned the sequences like we imagine you learned them all by heart. And it's trying to give another sequence behind it. It's saying, if I say AEDC, will it go to, you can go to BDC. It means maybe if I click on a site, I look at the description, I look at the price, I purchase it, now it goes into manufacturing, now it goes into conditioning and transport. So now it can predict huge amounts of decision-making sequences that it learned all by itself by just giving it the basic rules. Okay, so now if we go back to our little PowerPoint here, okay, we can go back to where we were here and we can see that the sequences we generated there for this example was, well, the order comes in, then it is cut into, the fabric is cut into the little sizes, and then it has to go on a conveyor belt. And then what happens is you have to give it the to the fastest sewing, sewing uh, department so you can get it out as fast as possible. 
Okay, and then we showed in this little step how these sequences went into the transformer and learned them. So now the system is very, very intelligent. So now we can move on to step three and look, look what's happening. Okay, and then you can, you, we're getting to our final result. Okay, so what we have here is a program with, it's a, it's, I admit this one's not an easy one, okay? <laughs> this one, this one's pretty long. It's in my book. It's in Artificial Intelligence by Example. You have some in uh, Hands-On Explainable AI and some in Transformers. You just you have to figure it, go it. So what it does here, I'll just, I'll just show you the example, okay? Let, let's, let's dive into the, the example. It's, there's a, convolut a convolutional neural network that is with a webcam and it's looking at the conveyor belt it's looking at the conveyor belt and what are we looking at we're looking at all these cut packs of pieces and we want to decide which sewing department we want to give it to station so it'll go faster so right here it says well if i look at that image the fastest way to do it is to i'm looking at all these sewing stations i i think e is the best one i think e is the the, the, the e station so right here you see sewing stations and you can see that E now is loaded. So what we're trying to do is load balancing between these sewing stations, but you can imagine anything in the world you want to balance the load, servers, warehouses, but here it's the sewing stations. And then it says, okay, let's, let's take another look at what's going on on the conveyor belt. Okay, and, and then it, it will go on like that. Okay, and it, now here it's saying, ah, oh, well, now I'm looking at this one here hmm where, where where should i put it well we can put it on e again let's go ahead and then on and on this is a this goes on 24 hours a day in corporations like amazon and they're doing this for every single product right Syria now it's saying let, let's go to a a is the best one so a could be the best warehouse the best sewing station the best uh, website whatever you want but you're in the world of recommenders Okay, now if we go back to where we were, well, then now we reach the, the time where I summarize this whole thing. Now, what am I, what am I saying? I'm saying 20,000 years ago, we were trying to optimize distances and information. What I'm saying is 300 years ago, someone, Louis XVI came up and said, we can't go on like that with manufacturing and delivering to the people, taking that that long, 300 years after, we're sitting here and say, why are the vaccines not in the warehouses? And what is the solution? The solution is right what I've, show, uh, I've been showing you. It's not deployed enough. We're going, right now, digital uh, highways have to go much faster. So the future is what I just showed you. You have to take these sequences, put them into transformers, and recommend the fastest way balancing the loads to get the service of the product from its initial place to us. So that way you've optimized uh, your transportation, optimal transport. So now I'm available for questions and thanks for listening to the presentation up to there.